Hello, Calculus. How are you doing? You will be receiving in the next two weeks a whole mess of free response questions that will be broken up by topic. The one you will be getting today is called Derivatives and Integrals with Graphs. I have taken all the AP tests back to 2014 and I put them in order of, of similar questions and you'll find that the question we're looking at today, the type of question, there's been a particular question on the test since 2014 to last year. And I can tell you for sure these are even further back than that, but we're just going to talk about just five years back. So we're going to do the 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. That's six different test questions that are on the same topic. You're going to see how they're all related. My videos will be videos explaining how to do one of those problems. So what you'll be getting is all the problems from 14 to 19 and their scoring rubric from AP, how they will grade the right answer and how many points they are. Not solutions, just the answers. These videos will go over um, particular questions at a time. So I'm going to start with 2014, I'll show you how to do that one, and I'll make a video for 15 and 16. And in our live sessions, we'll go over any questions you might have on those. I would like you to try to do as many as you can. And then once you get this kind of question down, we're going to go to a second type of question. So in the next two weeks, I'm going to go over different styles of questions with you so that when you get the AP test on May 12th, hopefully you'll have seen them. Okay. So here's a typical question about a graph and how the derivatives and integrals respond to them. So there's going to be a little bit of review involved with all this, of course, because, um, you know, you might not remember everything and that's okay. So you got a function here on a closed interval, negative five to, to four. The graph is three line segments. And the function of G is defined as the integral of F. So here's the thing you'll have to know. You'll have to know how these relate to each other as far as the integrals and the derivatives. But the first question is simply G of three, which means if I just plug in three for X, I'm finding this. Now from the reviews that we have just done, hopefully you remember that integrals are um, interpreted graphically as area. So I just want to know the area of this graph from negative three to positive three. So you're going to notice it's this triangle up here and this triangle here. Because this triangle is above the axis, we're starting here and going this way. The triangle is above the axis, so it's positive. This triangle is below the axis, so it's negative. So g of 3 is really just the area of those two triangles. So the big triangle, or the one above the axis, is 1 half of, what's the base? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the height is 4. Minus the little triangle, which has a base of 1 and a height of 2. So what, that's 10 minus 1. So g of 3 is 9. Okay. Part B. On the open interval in the graph of G, where is it increasing and concave down? So again, remember, this is why we do these problems to get you thinking about this stuff again. Because these questions are things we've done all year, but you haven't been asked them in this way before. So they're going to seem a little weird at first. But think about it. What does it mean? If G is decreasing, I'm sorry, increasing, then you basically want to know when the first derivative is positive. If the first derivative is positive, that means the function is increasing. Now, if you want to know um, when it's concave down, you want to know the second derivative is concavity. So the concave down means the second derivative is, oh, I should say, negative. Okay, so increasing is when the first derivative is positive. Concave down was the second derivative is negative. Now how do we find the first and second derivative based on this graph? All right, here's what you got to remember. Fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, here's an easy application here. If g is the integral of f, 
I take the derivative of g, it equals f. Okay, that's it. The derivative of g equals f. So in this first step up here, if I want to know when g prime is positive, well, I know that g prime is the same as f. So on this graph, where is f positive? All right, f is positive anytime it's above. Let's just do it in a different color. Keep it. Keep the colors consistent. The first derivative will have a yellow. It's wherever it's above the axis. So everything from negative 5 to 2 g prime is positive because f is positive. Okay? And it follows. We'll put this over here. If g prime of x equals f of x, then the second derivative of g, I take the derivative of both sides. That's all I've done. Take the derivative of g and the derivative of f. g prime, g double prime, sorry, is the same as f prime. I want to know where g double prime is negative, which means I don't know where f prime is negative. Now, what does f prime tell you? f prime tells you slopes. So where are the slopes negative on this graph? Well, the slopes are negative here and here. So the question is, where is g both increasing and concave down? So really, where do those two overlap? So g is increasing and concave down. Now I'm writing all this out because when you answer the AP test, you have to be very clear to them what you're talking about, okay? So it's increasing and concave down on the intervals from negative 5 to negative 3 and from zero, but not to, I almost put four. It's not to four. It stops at two because it's got to be positive. Zero to two. Okay. So negative three to um, I'm sorry, negative five to negative three and zero to two. Now it has to give a reason for your answer. Well, this is the reason up here. You've explained to them that you understand how it relates to the graph. All right. Question C. They've defined a new function for us. H. All right, we know that h equals that. Well, you know, I, I read it over. It's already there. We want to find h prime of 3. So let's find the derivative. Well, we got a quotient rule. That's all we got. So you got the bottom, all right, times the derivative of the top. And what's the derivative of g of x? Well, it's g prime of x minus the top. times the derivative of the bottom, which would just be 5, all over the bottom squared. All right, that's our derivative. Now we just plug in 3. So 5 times 3 times g prime of 3 minus g of 3 times 5 all over 5 times 3 squared. All right, let's put some values in now. 5 times 3 is 15. g prime of 3. Remember, g prime of 3 would be the same as f of 3. Right? So g prime of 3 would be the same as f of 3. And what's f of 3? Well, if you look at 3, it's down here, negative 2. minus g of 3. Well, g of 3, you know what? We already figured it out. g of 3 is 9. The AP tests do this a lot, where they give you, they want to know previous answers. You use previous answers in questions. Now, um, hold on, 15 squared is 225. Just so you know, you don't necessarily have to worry about using a wrong answer. Like, say you got 3a wrong. You did something silly, and you got like 8 or 9, or what is 9, or 10, or maybe even didn't know, quite know how to do it. Whatever answer you get for A, if you put that answer in here, 
you will get the correct full credit for the question. Even if the question is wrong, the answer will be wrong if you use a different value, but you use the value you got a second time. They don't penalize you twice for doing something wrong. So don't worry about missing problems in the future because you missed a problem in the past. They are good about that. All right, so this is negative 75 over 225. Now you don't have to reduce anything, so this is an acceptable answer. Um, but you know, it's also the same as negative one third. Okay. And the last one, we have another function P. Well, P is defined as this function, F of X squared minus X, find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of P at the point where X equals one, negative one. As soon as you see slope, don't worry about tangent line. We're not finding actually the equation of a tangent line. We're just finding the slope. And slope is just a derivative. We're only finding the derivative of p. So it would be f prime of x squared minus x times the chain rule. So the derivative of what's inside, so 2x minus 1. And now I'm just plugging in negative 1. f prime of, so negative 1 squared is 1. 1 minus negative 1 is 2. And 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So then the question is, what's f prime of 2? Well, here's our function of f. f prime means the derivative. The derivative at 2. Well, the derivative is the slope. So what's the slope of this line? So if you go down 4 and over 2, down 4 and over 2. So the slope is negative 4 over 2, which is just, whoops, sorry which is just negative 2. So p prime of negative 1 equals negative 2 times negative 3, which equals 6. And that is your answer. If you had done all that, you would receive full credit, which um, on the old free response would be 9 out of 9 points. So when you look at the answers, notice everything is out of 9 points. You'll be given a couple points for each part. All right, so that is a 2014. I'll be doing more videos about the rest of them, but until then, have a good one. Bye.